Hey, what's going on guys? Thanks for tuning in. My call sign is Blitz, and in today's video, we're gonna have a look at five essential upgrades for your long-term survival pack, also known as the good old inch bag. Let's get into it. Just when you thought the good old Sawyer Mini was the best compact filter on the market, this shows up the Katadin B Free. It's a simple yet highly effective design, just a bag and a filter. Takes up no space and holds a one liter when full. To drink, just give it a good dip in a water source, then squeeze the bag and let the filter do the rest. Even with the murky quality of the water you see here, the B Free still did an incredible job, leaving only a slight bit of an aftertaste. And this just seems to be common with any water sources near the intercoastal, which is a brackish water that is one step away from the actual ocean. Now over the years we've seen a big evolution in personal water filters starting with the revolutionary life straw then water bottles with filters and bags with filters and now Katadin has decided to jump in on the action with this design and you might say okay well the Sawyer Mini plus the 16 ounce squeeze bag is kind of the same as this yes it is but it's not this is a dedicated system if this bag rips you're basically SOL unless you can find some other container with an opening that is going to thread onto the filter. So there are some downsides to this. If the bag rips, you might be out of commission. But as a backup to a primary filter pump system, or just something that's just great to be able to fill up and drink on the go, and takes up less space in the Sawyer Mini, then I'm really liking the Katadin Be Free. For many years, I used to swear by my US military issue poncho liner, the good old Wooby, until I realized that a proper fleece blanket is about a billion percent better once I got my hands on this. The first fact to point out about this blanket is that it is produced 100% in America by Union Labor. The company is American Benchcraft, and they have a whole lineup of amazing products that they make right here in the US employing Americans, and this is just one of them. Now this blanket, is big, but it packs down quite nicely in size, has this awesome leather carrier harness that can actually be attached to molly webbing, and a warmth that is best appreciated in temps above the 30 degree mark. I live in the south, so it's December, and it's not like I'm stepping outside my door right now and, I, and you know, I'm like falling into two feet of snow. I'll be lucky if there's frost, if I see frost, and I, maybe, maybe, I don't know. I'll be happy if I see that. But anyways, I've used this blanket as a pillow, as a wind barrier for my hammock, as an improvised towel, and yes, as an actual blanket, sitting next to a roaring fire and enjoying life. So the blanket, you know, it just kind of, for me, it brings a nice feel of being at home. And it's a nice asset and a nice addition to my primary sleep system, which is a sleeping bag, a climate static V sleeping pad, and an inflatable pillow. Out of all of my gear, the cook set has seen probably the most evolution. I started with an SBIT pocket stove, then a larger cook set, then a smaller one, until finally I settled on this setup for long-term survival. Yeah, I know, it's a pot, it's kind of a big one. This is a Moore's K pot, but I find there is a great benefit during the cold season to have the ability to cook more than one meal with one fire. I filled this pot up with rice, beans, and sausage and fed myself and a good friend of mine throughout the course of an entire day of hard work of, of hiking and exploring and building a shelter and all of that. For dinner, we just reheated it on the fire that we kept smoldering throughout the day. Another advantage is the ability to carry or cook any small game that you shoot or trap. And then for quickie jobs such as boiling water, I just break out my Optimus Crux. It's simple and effective and typically I can boil about a cup or so of water in about 90 seconds flat. And then I figure since I'm carrying the Optimus Crux anyways, what's the big deal of tossing it in a pot with food cutlery and whatever else I want to have in there, some salt and pepper, maybe some coffee packets, some, uh, some, some sugar, whatever. It really is a great space saver and I keep my entire cook set contained within inside this one pot. Now here's an idea. How about a pack inside your pack? For those times when lugging around a giant backpack, it doesn't make sense. Here's your solution. 
This offering from 511 Tactical has such a small footprint in my main pack that I actually forgot that I packed it and then I spent five minutes unpacking to find the pack. Now, this design may look kind of familiar to you if you go to the gym and work out because it's just basically a tactical version of the gym drawstring bag, but it can be used in a variety of ways. Use the mini pack to store tinder you collect or leaves for bedding. You can store mission essential gear for a quick scout of the area. The bag can be used to store any wild foods that you find while you're out foraging, mushrooms, berries, whatever. You can store your dirty laundry in it. Or one thing I was thinking of, great way to secure food high, high above, up in a tree somewhere to keep it out of reach of bears, rats, possums, or whatever. The point is there's tons of uses in a very small package. Anyone who has spent more than a day in the big scary woods knows a backup pair of socks is a must. But nobody talks about backup shoes. Because if you don't have a backup, you're in violation of survival rule numero uno of one is none and two is one. So kindly go un -F yourself right now by getting a pair of basic trail shoes. They don't have to be fancy or cost a fortune. Your boots get wet, you get sick of wearing your boots, it's summertime and they're hot as hell. Set them off to the side and slide on your nice cozy dry shoes and thank God you brought them. Having a second pair also helps to distribute the wear and tear on your boots. Then of course another added bonus, low profile shoes are much lighter which means more agility and speed over the big clunky pair. And then finally you see they take up no space but if I really was bothered by the amount of space they took up I could just hang them off the back of my pack. And then also when I decide to venture forth from my mountain fortress the shoes look way better with jeans than some 10 year old pair of hiking boots that are half falling apart. If you're anything like me, you've probably seen the classic tobacco or Altoids 10 survival kit. These metal co containers are the perfect size for compact survival gear, but have one problem. They're in no way, shape or form waterproof. The best option is to wrap the edges with electrical tape, but that gets hard and falls off and peels over time. So if size is not a huge concern for you, then grab a waterproof cell phone dry case like this one and get started. I like to fill up on all the essentials, bank line, jute twine, a blade, compass, matches, medical, and more. Then I threw in some tin foil so I can make a cup and the condom for water carry, although it's kind of a pain in the ass to fill up. Once secured, the kit is completely airtight and waterproof. I threw that gear tag on there to make it easy to locate in the dark because this resides and just lives 100% at the bottom of my pack. This is last resort. This is when I run out of all the supplies, I still have this as backup. Now, of course, guys, that's just a few ideas on upgrading your long range survival gear. Be sure to evaluate that situation first in order to better select your kit. Hiking the Appalachian Trail for a few hundred miles probably doesn't require a big scary boomstick and a chest rig. Or maybe nowadays it actually does. <laughs> Anyways, you get the idea. Just don't forget probably the most important factor here and that is weight. Be intentional in calculating with your gear selection because ounces absolutely matter and you realize this once you get out and train with your gear and you get back home and you start looking for any way you can cut down on that weight. Got experience with long distance hiking, building inch bags or the like? Drop a comment down below with any tips or ideas you have on the subject. You can bet I reply to every single damn comment. See y'all next time. Peace. Show your support for the channel by checking out the wide range of survival gear available at thesurvivaloutpost.com. We stock only top quality, rugged, tactical equipment and apparel designed to support any mission or situation life may throw your way. Any gear you've seen in this video is linked up down there in the pin post and be sure to check out the suggested videos for more real world survival content and training.